Should Bama Nation be worried? That's going to be the big narrative, I think, uh, coming after that big, big win in the swamp. A win in the swamp against a top, we'll go ahead and say top 10 team. That's a top 10 team for sure. So we get a win against a top 10 Florida team in the swamp, and it's time for worry. Well, you know, any real fan would have already been worried. I certainly was. Uh, we're always worried at Alabama. Our standard is perfection, and when your standard is perfection, you should always be worried because it's hard to, it's hard to be perfect, right? Well, you know, uh, I don't understand where the concern from the national media is coming from. Uh, nobody seemed to panic like this last year when we struggled with Ole Miss in a, I think it was the third game of the season, too. Uh, I know that it was, it's just the score. It's the two points that's got everybody squirrely. But, you know, it's like I said coming into this season, this is not a perfect team. I never, I never expected it to be a masterpiece of a football team with no flaws. Uh, and I don't know why anybody else would as well, but uh, apparently they did. Apparently everybody thinks Alabama's going to come out and be undefeated every season. I mean, that's preposterous. They act as though we haven't lost a ball game in 20 years. I mean, you know, Alabama, Auburn beat Alabama just a couple of years ago in 2019 in their place. I mean, let's let's not be ridiculous. This team loses. It can lose. Of course, this team could lose. Uh, but a win in the swamp is still a win in the swamp. And, you know, and I think that part of this narrative is a diss to Florida. It just is. This is disrespectful to Florida. Uh, who's been disrespected all off season and going into the preseason? I felt like I, I, after the after the Clemson Georgia game, the narrative has been Georgia is definitely there. They're an elite team. They uh, they're going to be going to the playoffs. They're going to be contending for the national championship and all that kind of stuff. And I didn't see it then. And I feel like it's even more curious that Georgia, the attitude is, has has had Georgia on top of Florida by so much. They act like there's a big disparity between Florida and Georgia. I've never been able to see it. As a matter of fact, from the beginning of the season, certainly since the Georgia-Clemson game, uh, Florida's the team that I've had to win the East the entire time. So this game was no surprise to me. Um, and another thing I want to mention is how well I've done on my, how well, well I did on my prediction. I've never done a public prediction like that before. And uh, the first half, go back and look at my prediction on the on how the first half was going to go. It went exactly the way I said it was going to go. I said Alabama was going to get up by uh, a couple of scores probably and that late in the first quarter it was going to look like they were going to run away with the ball game and it was going to be a no contest. That's exactly what happened. They go up 21-3. to three, Everybody's feeling good. And I, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, uh, the, Donkey Kong's about to come out there and... <laughs> and destroy these Gators, and my pick's not going to look so good. But being a Bama fan, you know, I'm okay with that. But uh, then they started to come back and made it a game before half, exactly like I said it would go. And I started to get a little a little confident at that point. I felt like a genius. Uh, really up until the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter was the only part of the game that deviated from my prediction at all. Um, Florida certainly has turned out to be stronger earlier. I've always felt like this was a strong team, but I felt like maybe Alabama would have a little bit of an advantage in this game since it was so early in the season. Well, they had an advantage in the first half, that's for sure, but as soon as Florida got their legs under them and the pace, uh, they got used to the pace, you know, it was game on. And, uh, you know, I keep hearing everybody's wringing their hands about the defense. And, I mean, yeah, they told us it was going to be one of the greatest defenses. I mean, a lot of people said it was going to be the greatest defense that Saban uh, ever had. Well, I never, ever expected that for a second. And, you know, Golding, I've always had my questions about Golding. Uh, but this is a Golding, this is a Pete Golding defense, guys. This is just the way it's going to be. It's always going to be bend, don't break uh, with him. Um, I know that they lost Allen. Uh, you know, I'm going to take that back. I'm going to I'm going to roll that back a little bit because that first half against Miami, that that defense did look great. I mean, it wasn't allowing a, a centimeter. It looked like you know some of the old school Kirby Smart, and 
Jeremy Pruitt defenses. Uh, and then it didn't. It's not looked like that since since Christopher Allen has has left. Uh, but you know that's just the way it is in college football nowadays, guys. It's it's not a defensive world anymore. Uh, I hate it. I, I wish that it was, but but it's not. And this is the way it is moving forward. And Saban saw that. That's why he went out and got Kiffin. But uh, you know, I'm not going to get in a twist over this game. And I'm not going to get in a twist about Alabama yet. Uh, does Ole Miss scare me? Absolutely. I'm terrified of Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin. And I feel like this is going to be, uh, I feel like that game's going to be a lot like this one, a lot like the one that we played with them last year. But, you know, that's that's getting ahead. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to review this game first. Uh, well, the good parts were Bryce Young. The good news is Bryce Young is great. He is a legit savant back there. Uh, He's uh, still, I mean, what he threw for three touchdowns. I mean, the reason Alabama won that football game is because Bryce Young is so good. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and say that. So if he gets hurt, Alabama is screwed. But, you know, it's pretty much always like that with your starting quarterback. No no program ever wants to see their starting quarterback go down. That's He's there for a reason. Um, I feel like the O-line has still got a lot of gelling to do. They're not opening up enough holes when they do open up holes our our running backs look okay but when they don't open up holes the running game if there's a problem the big problem with Alabama's football team right now is the running game they've got to figure out a way to get some more yards and more consistency on the ground I've never thought Brian Robinson was going to be the guy we may not have a guy we may not have a big beast alpha uh, running back this year which is very very unusual for Alabama but uh, especially under Saban. But that's the way it's looking. I mean, I, I like uh, Roydell Williams. I butchered his name a few weeks ago. Uh, it wasn't even close to his name. It was like an amalgam of Chase, Chase McClellan and uh, Rory McElroy, the golfer, I think. I don't know what I was thinking. I had a mini stroke there or something. But it's, it's Roydell Williams is my favorite back there. I like him and I like Trey Sanders. And uh, I don't think we saw either one of them touch the ball in that Florida game, and I would have, uh, you know, when you get into a situation like that, I understand you don't want to start experimenting, and you don't want to start tweaking because you got to get out of there with a win. And what if I put one of these younger guys in and he fumbles, and all of a sudden we're in a bigger, tighter spot than we are right now? I get it, but uh, I would like to see, definitely like to see them uh, get some carries this upcoming week, and I would like to see them be a part of a plan, a game plan against a real team. Because uh, if we run into a team that's more complete than Florida, I don't know if we're going to run into that in the regular season or not. Uh, you know, we'll talk about more of that stuff as we go on through this season. But it looks to me right now like uh, we might have just gotten through the biggest test that we're going to have in the regular season. And uh, But if we don't then the running game is going to have to be worked on. I feel like the only team that might shut us down in the running game worse than Florida did would be Texas A&M. But the good news about that is, is Texas A&M does not have a high-octane dynamic offense like Florida does. So even without a running game, we should be able to get through them pretty good. And, and, and you know, if we had had Najee Harris or, or a running back like we're used to having in that Florida game, that would have been a much different game. We would have taken control. It would have gone more like my prediction went. Uh, we would have taken control in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, maybe we wouldn't have won by 17 points the way I predicted, but we would have won. We wouldn't have been in a position where we had to stop a two-point conversion and then get a first down after that just to escape with victory. It would have been closer to it was going to be it was always going to be a game. I never felt like that was not going to be a game cuz Florida's too good. I've got too much respect for that team and that coach right now to just say that we're going to be able to to roll through them. Uh so I'm feeling really good these gut check kind of wins especially in a hostile environment like that. They're worth their weight in gold. I've said it before, but it's true. We at least know that this team can handle adversity and win a ball game. You know, uh, a lot of times in years past, we didn't know that about Alabama until, 
you know, the Auburn game or the SEC championship sometimes. And I think that's another reason why the national media is overreacting a little bit to this is because for a while there, the SEC was so down, historically down, except for Alabama. It seems like the 14, 15, 16 seasons, Alabama did not have to sweat hardly at all. Uh, in uh, Well, I take that back. At 15, of course, you know, Ole Miss beat us. But 16 and the early part of 17, Alabama didn't have to sweat. In, in 2016, Alabama didn't have to hardly roll out of bed to beat teams. They, they were just beating anybody they wanted to any way they wanted to that season and until the Iron Bowl of 2017. Uh that was, well, the Mississippi State game leading up to that was a little a little rough. That was uh, some big-time defensive injuries uh, caused that stuff to happen. Plus, Jalen Hurts was grossly overrated those years he started for Alabama, in my opinion. I know a lot of people disagree with me about that. But, you know, Alabama beat Florida in the swamp. That's all that needs to be said. Uh, they may... This team could definitely drop it a game this year or two. Um, I don't think it's going to be more than that. I, I said that that could be a possibility before the season started. Uh, I don't think it's a possibility now for Alabama to lose more than two games, especially now that we're through Florida. Um, but the the you know the defense is the defense. That's a Pete Golding defense. It's probably not going to get any better. It's going to look so much better against different teams. I mean, that's a Florida team that this day and age, with the, the, the rules the way they are, that just, uh, that's going to happen against good offenses. Good offenses that can move the ball. You're, you're just, you just can't count on being able to three and out, three and out, three and out all game anymore. Now, we will have games like that against teams that have different kinds of offenses. But, um, you know, and moving on into the league, uh, another one of my picks uh, that turned out almost exactly the way I said it would happen. Of course, I didn't get into detail against uh, about that Georgia-South Carolina game, but it, it happened pretty predictably, and uh, that's good. You know, um, everybody's going to be high on that uh, Georgia team again now. JT Daniels come back off the bench, look good. Scored a lot of points. It's a very weak team, so they're going to get some credit for that. And uh, But I still think they're going to lose to that Florida team. I really do. Because I just don't think that Georgia has a high-octane offense against big-time good defenses. Um, and Florida's got a good, good defense. Um, there's a reason we weren't able to run, other than the fact that we have that we don't really have dynamic running backs right now. And that's because that Florida defensive front seven is stout. So, you know, moving forward, next week we're going to learn a lot about a lot more teams, I think. And, uh, you know, I was dead wrong about that uh, corn dog, big dumb gorilla pig down there in Baton Rouge. But that was, you know, I, that was definitely a passion pick that I didn't really honestly think that Central Michigan had a chance, but I do think that LSU is the kind of team that could lose any time that they go out on the field against just about any team, and uh, we'll see if that holds up as the season goes along. Um, Auburn, Penn State, you know, I, I, I predicted that Auburn was going to win that game 28-27, to and they wound up losing it 28-20, to uh, but you know... I feel good about that pick. I feel I feel good about that pick, and I feel good about the Auburn uh, football team this year. I think they're going to win way more games than anybody thought that they would uh, going forward. Penn State looked good. Uh, the Big Ten, you know, I don't keep up with them as intimately as I do the SEC, so uh, I'm not ready to say Penn State's the favorite in that conference yet. I still think Ohio State is, and I, I still think that Ohio State is a playoff contender. But... Um, you know, we'll see moving forward in that conference. Uh, another, the big national upset that I picked, uh, Nebraska over Oklahoma, I feel like that was a good pick. I mean, who, who in the country was picking that to even be close? Uh, but it turned out to be, you know, Nebraska took them 
took them all the way to the end there. And so maybe they can build on that. Probably not, but we'll see. And, uh, you know, I don't have anything else uh, in front of me to look at, obviously. Uh, I'm driving, but uh, uh, Mississippi State losing to Memphis is certainly noteworthy. I, I know that there was a, a bum ref uh, call in that game, but, you know, I don't, I don't harp on that kind of stuff. I don't harp on the refs. It is what it is, and we move forward. And uh, But I still think that Mike Leach and Mississippi State's a pretty good team. I don't think losing to Memphis is anything shameful uh, these days. They're a pretty good uh, non-Power 5 program. And uh, that game next week against uh, the Gorilla is going to be interesting because I think you've got one of the smartest coaches in the SEC against one of the certainly – no, the dumbest coach in the SEC. That's for that's for certain. And uh, that's going to be fun. And we're going to talk about that and a whole lot more next week. Thanks.